part where we just let the mic roll after we're done recording. Yeah, welcome to the after show, people. <laughs> and is there anything else you want to say, Jason? Um, yeah, so I didn't really get to talk about um, so this other group that I'm a part of, um, which is the Philadelphia Chess Society. Um, so that... I was waiting to hear you say something other than chess. <laughs> <laughs> no. This, yeah. Um, and so this kind of – this group, uh, our origins kind of go back to 2013. A friend of mine, uh, Mikhail Elmecki, who's also a chess coach, uh, kind of invited me, kind of pushed me into going uh, to uh, Super Nationals. Um, which is the first time that we had attended a national chess championship. Um, we filled up a 52 passenger bus between uh, his chess club, Paul Robeson Chess Club, the Minor Threats, and a couple other schools and uh, chess clubs. And we went to Nashville. And that, that was definitely a turning point for uh, my chess career or trajectory, however you want to look at it. I've been to eight national championships since then, which I believe is more than anybody else from Philadelphia. Um, and the idea of what is the Philadelphia Chess Society uh, was kind of in limbo. Just everybody's very busy. Um, we had a lot of goals. We were working on those goals loosely. And we weren't quite getting where we, we wanted to be. And this year which is kind of great. It's four years later. This We'll be going to Super Nationals again. That happens every four years. Um, we have a solid board of four members, um, and we will be taking two buses to Nashville this year. So we we won't really be split up this way, but we kind of think of it, we're taking a whole extra bus of people. So there'll be uh, around 50 people who would not be attending Nationals otherwise, about 40 kids who we are assisting in going, um, so which is a much bigger project. I think the the budget is about forty thousand dollars. Wow! Um, and that that includes buses are the biggest expense, then hotel rooms, um, entry fees, and food. Um, and a, as frustrating as it can sometimes be, because you're like, well, this would just be easier if I wasn't, you know, helping other people or. We didn't have to worry about these other kids, and I'm sure once we get there, there'll be even more work than I can anticipate. But there's going to be 40 extra kids going this year, you know, in addition to the 15 or however many you know I end up taking. Well, you know, you got to be a dreamer, kind of like that, because the guy I keep going back to James McNeil. And I've had lots of great teachers, but he just stands out above and beyond. He always had these visions, and he would say these things, and we would just look at him like he was crazy. Like, we're going to build an electric car. There's going to be a windmill there that will power the electric car. And everything he said came to fruition. And it wasn't easy, and it wasn't that he thought it was easy, but he had such a clear vision, and you need people that are visionaries like that. The uh, Do you have any non-chess hobbies? Um, yeah, I do. I do things outside of chess. Um, I skateboard. Uh, I try to play guitar when I have time. You try to play guitar. Yeah. That yeah. Do you ever succeed? <laughs> <laughs> a little bit. Are you a better chess player or guitar player? Uh, I'm definitely a better chess player. <laughs> okay. Now since since you're so well known for chess, is it one of those situations where everybody is always bringing you chess stuff? And Def you end up <laughs> where if you live to be 90 years old, you're just going to have a house full of chess related items uh that definitely happens and Every sometimes it's christmas he gets a chess board right yeah. well it's it's i mean sometimes it's amazing and people give you these books that you know it can be quite pricey or and now i have it for free and now we can study from that I, but i mean you also just get everything chess related chess related you get the 99 cent book that you buy for like a third grader um you get the cheap flimsy board that well, what do i do with this the chess tie I don't have a chest tie, actually. There you go for Christmas, yeah. everybody. Make sure, let's now, get ten chest ties yeah. there. Now I know what my sister will be getting me. <laughs> the uh, so my, my my grandmother collected bells, and she had this case full of porcelain bells and brass bells and all these bells from all over the world. And I I remember bringing her bells back from somewhere I went, and I don't travel a lot. Um, but I brought her bells back, and I said, look, and 
here, you're going to love these. And where do you want them? And she said, I don't care. And I said, they're bells. Don't you like them? And she said, when your grandfather and I got married, we had a set of bells that somebody gave us. We put them on a mantelpiece because we didn't have anything to put on a mantelpiece. <laughs> People came and they saw the bells and they kept bringing bells. Here we are 50 years later. The bells won't stop coming. <laughs> and she said, I never even liked those two first bells. I'm stuck with bells. But the uh, – so, you know, keep that in mind when everybody's bringing him chest ties. Uh, the uh, – you, 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 you do this – because you're passionate about it. You do this. I mean, I, th I get a feeling if you weren't a teacher, you would still be doing this. Yeah, I mean, well, it, it, it's kind of just great how that worked out, you know, that it all kind of tied together where I was, you know, working all week. Or I say, I always say working and people are like, well, you're not really working. You have chess. You know, I don't get paid. But, uh, you know, I, we were having practice. We go to tournaments. Um and like it's sometimes that could be exhausting and I'd be sitting at a tournament and I'm grading papers and I'm writing lesson plans. And now that it's all kind of tied together and I have this very unique, amazing job just because of what I was doing. Um, you know, I didn't, I didn't also, I didn't ask for this job. I didn't pitch the job. The job got pitched to me, uh, which is, you know, felt amazing. Well, you, you, you know, it's, it's funny because I never liked the word teacher. I always <laughs> liked the word educator. And that is part of educating people. That is part of an education. It combines so many different things. And it's uh, – if you are doing this and if you're following the tradition of other teachers I think I've known that are similar to you, do you partially go broke because of it? Um, that was happening for a long time. <laughs> um, recent years have been much better. But yeah, very early on – I was spending a lot of money uh, so that we could play in you know, this tournament or get to that tournament or eat, um, things like that. Yeah, our teachers were always the ones that had the special activities. You know, you found out later they were really subsidizing it. There was no mystery money coming from the school. It was coming out of their pocket. Right. You know, how, how old are you? I'm 35. And you've been a teacher? So you've been 22? Yeah, so right after I got out of college, I – Came to Philly because there was a room in a house available with a bunch of friends. Um, I, you know, I had a teaching degree, uh, but I wasn't quite ready to grow up. So I was subbing and I, I worked every day, but it was very easy if I wanted to go on vacation. I don't have to take off. I just don't take a job. Um, so I, I did that for three years right after college. Okay. I got the grow up thing from you saying you skateboard. It's okay. yeah. the, uh, the, uh, you know, that's good. But one day, that's the kind of hobby one day you have a sudden break with it. You're just, I'm done. It's like motorcycle racing. You know, I'm done. Well, not quite as dangerous, but. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, no, I, I think it's great. It'd be great if somebody would come up and sponsor it and, uh, you know, get a couple decent sponsors and, I think the people that are helping it uh, – I think the people that are helping it with the small donations are helping more with the soul of it and the spirit of it, uh, you know, and that's important too. That's very valuable, but it'd be nice to just uh, get get everybody uh, – get everybody so that everybody that wants to do this can do this without presenting a hardship on their parents because I know growing up – I know I wanted to do everything that came out and I'd be bugging my mother and I thought, you know, I didn't know where the money came from. But, you know, I'd say, oh, it's just this. And it would put, you know, I'd put a strain on her. Um, but it'd be nice if they had the money uh, to everybody that wanted to do it, do it. It's really important to kids that when they are in that mindset that they want to do something that's right. We really should support those things. Uh, chess advice. What, what chess apps do you like? Uh I don't, I don't use them so much. I, I have like one that I use to – the kids use and I monitor it. It's uh, chess kids, I guess kid, chesskid.com. Okay. So I'll have it on my phone because then I can see, well, what puzzles do they solve? What, you know, I can – it's nice. You can monitor all your kids. But I find out like in the grocery line, I'll pull it out. I'm standing there waiting and I'll solve, you know, two or three puzzles um, while I'm, you know, waiting there bored. 
And do you have, uh, with your collection of chess items, so the boards that they play there, is it all traditional or do you get it? I know there's many theme boards. Uh, um, I can't personally really stand to look at any of those other things. And even like uh, typical tournament boards, the vinyl mat, and the black and white plastic pieces, just – I've seen those so many times. I don't even like to look at nice wooden pieces. Um, just I'm used to that one thing. You know, I could adapt, but like I walk by a chessboard and it's that large tournament black and white pieces and my brain kind of can, okay, I see what's going on. I know I even I walk by like a wooden set with just like kind of light and dark wood and it takes me a while to, wait, what's over there? Okay, is that, you know, just... And so a couple of times kids have had those like, you know, the Harry Potter board or the – I was like, how do you remember what those are? Right. Right. And they're, they're – uh, when I was – when I was growing up, there was a game years ago called Archon, which is a chess-like game, which came out right at this time that we were playing chess in school. And um, you had pieces that each had powers, and it was just like a chess board. But the pieces would they invaded a spot they would fight and then you had a video game where you fought okay and so you had a chance to turn around and just the you know one you know a rook was stronger than a pawn but a pawn it's really quick it could stab you a lot <laughs> had a chance and it was a really neat game i still every now and then i'll go in the app store and search and see if it's there but the uh you know it's 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 interesting so i guess that the whole Star Trek 3D chess thing would just freak you out. <laughs> yes. Definitely would not want to look at that. <laughs> so so th there's the gag gift to get him for Christmas. <laughs> Is there anything else on there you want to No, do? no. I think uh talked about what I do a lot. <laughs> okay. And thank you to Jim Stakes. Yeah. And uh, I, I endorse no – even though I said I like Jim's the best, I endorse no steak over another in the city. <laughs> All steaks are equal. Yeah, you gotta be political neutral. Yeah, but uh, I I tend to eat more Delisandros, but whenever I'm near gyms, I go there. Uh, <laughs> so I'm closer to gyms. But thank you for coming again. Yeah, and thank uh, you so much that, for having me. Uh, that's it, Russ. Okay.